Okay, so today we're going to analyze um, some quadratic equations, and we're actually going to spend a fair chunk of this, the first half of this course, analyzing quadratic equations. And we're going to analyze them in three different forms. This is standard form here, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're not going to be doing that one yet, but we will get to it um, later in the course. What we're going to start with today is vertex form. It looks like this. We're going to analyze it and um, see what happens when we change the values for a, h, and k. Uh, same with factored or also called intercept form. That is one we will be we will be doing, but not today. We'll be doing it later in the course. So for the whole first chapter, um, we will be analyzing vertex form. So, this is the sheet we're working on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at A, H, and K. We're going to change those values, and we're going to see what happens. So we have uh, a block here for A. Let's start with A. Okay, now it says what happens when A is positive and what happens when A is negative. So to do that, we're actually going to look at um, Desmos here. Okay, so here's our graph, and I have these sliders. Right? This is the A slider. So if I move A to be, um, right now it's at zero, and if it becomes negative, you can see the parabola sort of opening down. If I move it and make it positive, it opens up. So that's what the value of A will do to, to your parabola. So let's fill in that sheet. So when A is positive, the parabola opens up. And when A is negative, the parabola opens down. And then we have a couple other situations. When A is greater than 1 or when A is less than negative 1. So you probably saw something else happen. Let me go back. So right now, that's the value of 1. If it's greater than 1, it looks like it's being stretched. If it's, that's negative 1. When it's less than negative 1, again, it looks like it's being stretched. If it's somewhere in between negative 1 and 1, it looks like it's being um, compressed. So, what we're going to write is if A is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, we're going to say we have a narrower opening because it's being stretched. And if it's between negative 1 and 1, it becomes more compressed, so it's going to be wider. Alright, so that's what happens um, when we change the value for A. Next, let's look what happens when we change the value for H. So over here, moving the box over, we're looking at when H is greater than 0 and when H is less than 0. So let's go back to our graph. I'm going to put A back to just a value of 1. And then I'm going to change h. Right now it's at 0. This is our um, slider for h. I'm going to move it this way. Moves to the left. And I move it this way. It moves to the right. Okay, so when h is a positive value, we move to the right. When it's negative, we move to the left. But one thing you want to be careful of is in the equation, there's a negative here. That negative, think of as being not part of the h. Okay, so we do minus h. So if h has a value of positive 5, like, um, like that, this equation would look like x minus positive 5. And so h would be positive. If h is negative, say negative 5, right, this would be x minus negative 5. And those two negatives form a positive. So when we actually write it, we would write x plus 5. 
So it's very easy to look at x plus 5 and think, oh, move it 5 to the right. But what I want you to think of, for the, um, for the brackets, so inside the brackets, imagine taking the opposite sign. Okay, so let's go back to our, our handout. And so when h is greater than 0, we're going to move to the right. And when h is less than 0, we're going to move to the left. Okay, this also helps us tell us what the x-coordinate of the vertex is. Okay. So it tells us the x-coordinate of the vertex. The vertex is right here. That's the vertex. Okay. So currently, you'll notice that our h is negative, uh, negative 5, and so our vertex, well, the x-coordinates of a vertex is negative. Now lastly, we are going to look at k. Let's move over here. So what's going to happen if k is greater than 0, and what's going to happen if k is less than 0? So let's go to the graph. I'm going to move h back to 0, put it right in the center there. Okay, and this is our slider for k. So when I change the value for k, I'll make it positive moves it up, I make it negative, and it moves it down. So k is a vertical translation. We say h is a horizontal translation, and k is a vertical translation. And a would be a um, stretch or a compress. Let's go fill this out. So if k is greater than 0, we move up. And if k is less than 0, we move down. And since we move up and down, k is actually telling us the y-coordinate of our vertex. Let me just pause there and see how everyone's doing. And so another thing we like to talk about is the x-intercepts. How many times does our parabola cross the x-axis? And we're going to look at three different cases. When k is 0, when k is greater than 0 and k is less than 0. So let's start when k equals 0. If we make k 0, you can see it comes down and just touches the x-axis. So it's only touching it in one location. So we're going to write, if k equals 0, then the graph, the graph has 1, 0, or 1 x-intercept. Now let's look at when k is greater than 0. Okay. When k is greater than 0, it looks like it doesn't have any x-intercepts at all. However, I could change the value of a and make a negative. Now you can see it crosses the x-intercept, or sorry, the x-axis twice here and here. So if k is positive, it'll depend what a is, see if you have any intercepts or not. So we're going to write, if a is greater than 0, then there are no x-intercepts. Whereas if a is less than 0, there's two x-intercepts. And we can do the same if k is... Um, K, what if k is less than 0? So if k is less than 0, we'll bring k down below the x-axis. Right? When a is negative, it looks like it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. But if we make k positive and we open up our parabola, it has 2. So the exact opposite situation. Okay? So we're going to write 2 and 0. All right, so let's look at an example. Here we have an example. We have minus 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 5. Okay, let's type this into the um, equation to help us. So we have a, which is minus 2. So let's set it to minus 2. 
Okay, h, it says x minus 3. So remember, in the bracket, we're going to take the opposite sign. So we're going to set h equal to positive 3. And then k is plus 5. So it'll be plus 5. So that's what our graph is going to look like. And we have to answer a few questions to describe that graph. So first, the direction of opening. The direction of opening is actually down. It opens down. And we can tell this by um, the value of A. Okay. All right, so you can tell that it opens down even without looking at... Um, without looking at Desmos because the value of A is negative. If it's negative, it opens down. If it's positive, it opens up. So A is um, negative. So it opens down. Okay. Then we have um, a stretch or a compression. Okay. Again, we're going to look at the value of A. We look at the graph. You can see that compared to when it's a value of 1, when we make it a value of 2, it gets stretched. And that happens when A is less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. So we are going to write that it is a stretch. horizontal and vertical transformation. The horizontal comes from our h value. So we have h equal to, in this case, um, 3. Remember, take it the opposite sign for the one that's inside the bracket. So that means we're going to move to the right 3 units. For our vertical transformation, that's from our k value. And in in this case, it equals 5. And since it's positive, we're moving up. So we're moving up 5 units. And so you can see that in our Desmos. So we moved to the right 3 and up 5. And so that actually tells us exactly where our vertex is. That's their coordinates for our vertex, 3 and 5. So we can then write our coordinates for the vertex as 3 and 5. Okay, I'll just pause to let people catch up. Now, the number of x-intercepts. So if we look at our graph, it looks like it crosses the x-axis twice, here and here. And to determine that, you really need to know two things. One is the vertex above or below the x-axis, and that will that information is given to you by the value of k. And two, whether or not um, the graph opens up or opens down, and that will be whether or not a is positive or negative. So in this case, it's above the x-axis, uh, above the x-axis, and it's opening down, and so we're getting two different um, intercepts. going to write two, two intercepts. Now the next two questions we briefly talked about before during um, our first lesson in this chapter is domain and range. So domain is all of the x-coordinates where the um, function exists, and range is all the y-coordinates where the function exists. Now up until now we've simply said, um, we've looked at points, right? We said, oh, for these three points, the domain is, for example, 2, 3, and 5. But in this case, we don't have points. We have a continuous function. So looking at the graph, right, you can see that in x, it exists, well, it exists here. It exists here, right? So it's at 3, right? It's at 2.5. It's at 2.38476, right? It's at 1.2. And it's even 
all the way down. You can even say it's over here at negative 10. You can't see it, but this is going to go down and keep moving to the left forever. So eventually it will get there. And the same with the right side. It'll keep moving to the right forever. So this actually um, hits every single possible value for x. So what we're going to write, and this is um, what we write in math, Okay, we do these sort of um, squiggly brackets to say um, in the set x is an element, and we do this sort of curve to e for all real numbers. Okay, and we do, for some reason, I don't know why, we do a double vertical line. If you just want to write r, it's fine. But this just means um, x exists in the set of all real numbers. If you remember, a real number is um, a positive number, a negative number, um, zero, and it also includes um, fractions, uh, decimals, and even um, um, never-ending ones like uh, pi. Okay. So let me pause there, see if everyone's okay. Now for the range, let's go look at um, the graph. It looks like its y-coordinate exists, well, exists at 5 here, and it exists, our, our red parabola here, exists at 5 and everything smaller than 5, and it just goes down forever. So it exists for all real numbers, but there's a condition. For all real numbers, 5 or lower, it doesn't exist up here at 6, right, or 7, or 8, or 9 just the numbers 5 and lower. So how do we write that? So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to write y exists for all real numbers. Then we're going to put a vertical line, and this is where we add our condition. We say y must be less than or equal to 5 for this example. All right, so let's practice this, and we're going to do some more examples. Um, there's an example up here for you, and we're just going to follow that to be able to try the other ones. So here's an equation. Minus 2, x minus 3 squared plus 3. So our value for a, here is a. So a equals negative 2. So we're going to write a equals negative 2. Right. H, our value for H, that's inside the bracket with the opposite sign. So here it says negative 3, so we're going to say H is positive 3. And lastly, K, that's our 1 at the end here, that constant right at the end. So K equals 3. Now our vertex are the coordinates H, K. So our vertex is going to be at 3, 3. Now, number of x-intercepts. To determine this, we need to know two things. We need to know whether or not a is positive or negative, and we need to know where the vertex is. So let's just draw a little graph here. And we'll write the coordinates for the vertex at 3, 3. So somewhere over here, there's the vertex. And then a is negative, so that means it opens down. So we can just do a, a basic sketch of it opening down. So in that case, you can see it's going to cross the x-axis here and here. So we're going to have two intercepts. Okay. Now we need to um, state the transformations starting from x squared. So we have the graph y equals x squared. How do we change that graph? What did we do to y equals x squared to turn it, to turn it into this? Well, first, a did something. a either stretched it or compressed it. Okay. In this case, since it's um, less than negative 1, or if it were greater than positive 1, it's a stretch. So we are going to be stretching it by a factor of 2. So, by 2. I'm being lazy with my writing. I should write by a factor. 
don't be making it by a factor of two. Okay. And then we need to know, has it moved left or right, and has it moved up or down? H will tell us if it's moved left or right. If it's positive, it's to the right. So, right three units. And then we have K, which tells it, us um, whether or not it's moved up or down. Since it's positive, we're moving up. Three units. So those are our transformations. Now our domain, if it helps for every quadratic we're going to do, the answer for the domain is the exact same. It exists for all real values. It's the range that you have to um, take a minute to think about. But again, you'll always start it the same way. We're going to write it exists for all real values. But what we have to figure out is the condition. So right here is our vertex, which is 3, 3. So our y coordinate then is at 3. So the graph exists at 3 and for everything below 3, nothing above 3. So that's our condition. y must be 3 or lower. So in math we write y is less than or equal to 3. I'm just gonna... All right, so let's do one more. For this one, our value for a is a half, so a equals one half. Our value for h is in the bracket with the opposite sign. So this is positive one, so h is going to be negative one. And our k is this constant stuck on the end here, so k equals five. Our vertex is just the values for hk, which is negative one and five. So our vertex exists at negative one and five. Now to figure out the number of x-intercepts, let's just do a quick sketch. We'll find our vertex, which is negative 1 and 5, somewhere over here. And then because a is positive, it opens up like that. Which means it never touches the x-intercept. So, 0 x-intercepts. Then... We are going to figure out what the translations are. First, do we stretch or do we compress? In this case, because the number is between negative 1 and positive 1, it's a compression. So we're going to write compression, and it's a vertical compression. That's important. In this course, we're not going to talk about horizontal compressions or stretches. We're only going to talk about vertical compressions or stretches. So again, I should not be lazy and I should write vertical. So vertical compression by a factor of one half. And then as it moved left or right, in this case, h is negative, so it's gone left one unit. And k is positive, so we've gone up five units. Our domain, it exists everywhere to the left and everywhere to the right. So like every other example we're going to do in this course, our domain is xer. All real values. Our range, again, you'll start at the same. It's all real values for y, but what we need to figure out is what the condition is. So here is our vertex at the y coordinate 5. And it looks like it's greater than that, but not less than that. So it can equal 5 and everything above 5. So we're going to write y must be greater than or equal to 5. I'm going to stop it there.